second one. <laughs> Uh, in, in a little bit, I'm going to show you about neurolymphatic reflexes. And I'm just going to show a demonstration right now for demonstration purposes, okay? So I'm going to test you in the same way. So I'm going to ask you to put your arm up in that same way, with your fingers out, and I'm going to have my open hand behind. And, oh, oops, 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 oops. She's nice and weak to begin with, so we've got to get her strong right away. So I'm going to, I, I actually, I'm going to use a different method. Okay, I could trace her meridian forward and see if that energy comes back, but I could also massage her right there. I'd actually like to tell something on you, okay? I think I will. Um, <laughs> she has a wire underbra on, and wire <laughs> underbras tend to clog your lymphatics. So, it, And that could be one of the reasons her energy is weak right now, because the energy doesn't drain, okay? So I just massaged where the wire is, and we're going to see what happens if it gives you any energy. Yeah, she's mm -hmm. got more energy. Do it again. Yeah. So uh, likewise, I'll show you what a wire does. If I go like that, it's the same thing that a wire does. Now, push up with all your might, and it has no way. It takes your energy away. So if you're draining energy through the day and you've got a wire on, whip it off. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Now, what you do is you massage under your breasts, okay? Hey, folks. It's my honor and pleasure to bring you this video that we just did the other day in a webinar, a Biomag healing webinar I do on Mondays. And Dr. Bruce Ryan has, has graciously been on, uh, I think, three times now, speaking for two to three hours. So I've taken our last talk because it's critically important that women and men learn about the causes of breast cancer, learn why breast cancer has gone up the way it has, learn how the lymphatic system of a woman's body gets backed up because the bras, especially wire bras, back up the lymph system and just creates an absolute toxic environment for cancer and lumps. And Dr. Bruce is going to show you how to take care of that yourselves. They don't encourage, and how are they, the medical mafia does not encourage medical self-exam or breast exams themselves. Let's talk about breast health. Um, in 1945, <clears throat> one out of 22 women had uh, breast cancer, developed breast cancer. Um, the rate continued to climb, and several years ago, um, about I think 10 years ago, it was one in seven women. My guess is that the rate it's been going by now, it's about one in six women. And um, the things that are making uh, uh, women get breast cancer are um, mostly, uh, one would think pesticides, GMOs. Uh, so women, if you want to give yourself an 80% chance of getting cancer, uh, by the time you reach half your life expectancy, um, or at least by eating GMOs for 30 years, then um, uh, that's the way to go. So um, we're surrounded by that with our toxic food. I hope everybody on this call is eating organic food. Uh, so when you, eat, when you eat these things, you are putting yourself at risk. That's why the incidence of... of uh, um, of cancers keeps increasing every year with, with women in this country to the point where now I think they've stopped publishing because it doesn't look so good. But um, wait, Doc, uh, so just to summarize, you were saying 80% of these issues with cancer with women in their breasts is due to, due to um, the DDT and the GMOs? The GMOs, the uh, glyphosate? No, only if you're a mouse. But thank God the <laughs> government knows we're not mice, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, uh, but if you're a mouse, I would really worry about eating GMOs. There you go. Now, okay, so the, um, um, okay, next. Um, um, another one of the things that, here's two things that, that will, will screw up, you know, will cause, well, here's a few more things that will cause breast cancer. Number one, anything that blocks lymphatic drainage is going gonna, is gonna to cause uh, breast cancer. So um, uh, let's talk about, how many ways we can generate a blockage for lymphatic drainage? Um, everybody talks about bras, but they really don't get what, what's going on with the bras. So I'm, ex I'm going to explain to you in a few minutes. First, before I explain to you the bra, I have to explain to you about the rib. 
So we have a bunch of ribs over here. We have a bunch of ribs. And when we breathe, we go. And by the way, and that pumps the lymphatics. By the way, the breasts have no active way of pumping the lymphatics. If I want to pump the lymphatics over here, I can flex my muscle, move around, and the muscle action will, will squeeze and relax lymphatics more or less, and it'll pump the lymphatics. Where you have no muscles, you have no active way of, of pumping lymphatics. In the breasts, there are no, no muscles. We have the only way that we can pump lymphatics from the breast is passively. How? Well, when we walk around and the breasts are moving this way and that way, that's a passive pumping action. Uh, of course, we, we can stop all that from happening by wearing a bra. And uh, that's one of the problems uh, with bras is that they stop lymphatic pumping uh, to a great degree. Um, but then uh, there's another, uh, uh, um, so you have the movement and you have the ribs. Now, for those of you who are familiar a little bit with osteopathy or, um, or uh, chiropractic, you'd know that the ribs move around with every breath, actually, and they're connected to the spine and they're connected in front. And sometimes one of the muscles attached to the ribs gets a little tense or we slept the wrong way and, and did something. And the rib is suddenly out of place, okay? Here, this rib is gonna be out of place. And now when you're pumping, when you breathe, you go Notice there's no movement over here. And because there's no movement over here, the lymphatics wanting to go over here are stuck. And because they are stuck, the, the lymphatics can't go in, we're gonna have a backlog of lymphatic fluid down here. And that can eventually cause a thickening of the breast tissue. If you feel the breast tissue, you'll feel the thickening. And uh, this is the ribs, yeah. And uh, so, uh, where is it? Okay, this doesn't show the lymphatics at all, but you get the idea. The rib is like a bunch of bucket handles. Okay, we could go. What will happen is that you have thickened tissue where the rib, where the lymphatics don't want to drain out. And if you leave it alone, you'll end up with a firm tissue or, or a soft lump. And if you leave that alone and, you can, and this problem continues, you'll end up with a firm lump. And if you let that continue, you will have a hard lump. And then eventually you have a cancer. So you go through the processes. It's not like, oh, cancer happened out of nowhere. You have toxic tissue that can't pump the lymphatics. So. Um, Doctor, is there, is there a test that show women that don't wear bras versus women that wear bras and lymphatic change? There have been some studies done and some things and, and I've seen some evidence of it, but it's, it's shoddy evidence. And that's because we really don't have the, the tools to measure it properly. And uh, um, uh, it's just, anyway, I can only tell you, speak from my experience, because I reverse these lumps all day long. I do this with women all the time. So I can tell you what brings them on, what makes them go away. So I'll just talk from that perspective, okay? Sure. Um, so it was after I introduced myself, I said, I'm a doctor, do you have anything you can you'd like me to help you with. So I, um, she said my left knee, but she said, it's okay. I'm getting physical therapy. I've been getting it for a few months and you know, hopefully in a few months it'll be fine. So I said, can I look at it? She said, sure. So I looked at it. The patella was out of position, the kneecap. So I just simply did a little osteopathic maneuver, got it back into place. I said, how's your knee? She wiggles it around. She goes, you know what? There's no more pain. I said, okay, anything else I can fix? So she uh, <laughs> said, well, nothing really. So I said, do you mind if I just scan you, you know, your structure once just to see if there's anything I can find that's a problem? I'll fix it for you. She said, sure. So I, I went like this, like that. I never met the woman before. I wasn't going to go like this. So I go like this, like that. And then I go, you know, down to the, you know, hips, knees, ankles. And I said to her, there's one problem I found here. She said, what is it? I said, your fourth rib right here is out of position. It's not sitting in good position. And I said, it's very easy to pop it back in and fix it, but, um, uh, and if you want, I can fix your rib for you. And she said, why, you know, what's the big deal? I, you know, I can't tell there's a problem. So I said to her, well, the problem with the rib, if it's not in place, it's gonna block the lymphatics. And I said, where your particular um, uh, rib is, is, is positioned, the lymphatics that are blocked are likely to create a, uh, thickening of tissue and then a 
soft lump, firm lump, and eventually it can develop into a cancer. And I pointed to her, I said, it's right over here, you know, right under the nipple, the nipples here. I said, right over here. And she sat down and she said, oh my God, you know? So I said, I didn't mean to scare you, are you okay? She said, that, you didn't scare me. I said, well, what's going on? She said, I've been going for the last six months to New York Hospital, Cornell, and they've been studying me up and down with MRIs, with everything, and six months later, they find out, they say, okay, you have a breast cancer. I just had a lumpectomy to have it removed. It was right over here. Wow. She said, what's going on here? These guys are working with me for six months, and they, it took them that long to figure out that I had a cancer over here and fix it. She said, you walk in through the door, you say, hi, cancer right here. You know, what's going on? So um, I said to her, it's not, this is not normal medicine. I said, it's a combination of osteopathy and the thermography that I do because I learned how the ribs work with, the, uh, uh, with, with breast health. And uh, um, that's why I can pretty much tell you where your problem is going to be uh, very often without, without you saying a word just because of where the ribs are, uh, what the ribs are doing. How, that's how, how, doctor, how, how often do you see women in this condition? Or your patients that come in? I only, I only do a breast exam for political reasons. I want to be politically correct. So, you know, I, I only do it if they want a thermogram because I don't want anybody saying, hey, he just wanted to do a breast exam. I don't, you know, care about that. So I don't want, I don't want anybody saying anything like that. I just, if they're coming in for a breast problem, I will examine them. My guess is that if I, if I examined 10 women at random, I would probably find a problem in each one of them. So remember I spoke about the ribs, right? The, the, uh, the bad rib. Okay, now let's talk about two things that can create problems with the lymphatics in relation to, uh, to that sort of. One is bras. Let's talk about bras for a second and then we're gonna talk about mammograms. Bras, what I found out was this. I always wondered how come the wire underneath is creating such a problem for the lymphatics above it because it doesn't make any sense. And then one day I figured out what the problem was and you're not gonna believe it. It's, um, you know, the wire goes around like that and it digs into the side over here and it irritates the muscles and it causes the, the ribs to not move well because that one rib is stuck. Well, when that one rib is stuck, it doesn't move well, you know, it's like, like that, right? And, um, and that's because something is poking at this side of the rib. No, nope. okay. So what happens is that because the wire is poking into this, the rib that goes right past this wire, the muscles that attach to the rib of this wire are tense and they don't let the rib move. And then you get a rib that's not moving and then you get a cancer from below it. That's what happens. It doesn't, the blockage doesn't go backwards. It goes exactly in the direction it's supposed to go because the rib is, uh, is a lever. You know, the, the, um, uh, the, when you think of a long extension, the shape of the rib, it's like you're dealing with a handle, like you're dealing with a lever. And uh, hang on a second. Um, so in this case, the lymphatics, remember the lymphatics of the breast are completely dependent on external activities such as the rib cage or movement, walking. And by blocking one of the ribs from moving, like with a bra wire sticking. So what do you do? Watch, here's the wire right here, the end of the wire, bend it out a little bit so it goes like that. You see what I mean? So it goes, it, it points outside. Of course, it might scratch your underarm, but you bend it out just a little bit and then it doesn't poke into the muscle and then it's not as big a problem. I'm gonna show you a trick. And I once counted and I had, uh, I, you know, uh, women came to me, you know, with breast lumps and I got rid of them. And usually within five to 10 minutes, the lump was gone. And I think uh, I once decided to just see how often it happens. And I counted over 20 lumps that were made to disappear immediately within a session. Um, and then this one woman uh, broke the, str the string of successes because she had a cancer and it would not go away. So, you know, but if it's non-cancerous, in fact, that's one of the ways I figure out if it's cancer or not. If I can do the lymphatic treatment, I'm gonna show you how to do it in a minute. Um, if I can do the lymphatic treatment 
and it makes the, the lump completely go away, then, uh, then it's, and I usually can tell it's not a cancer. And I can usually tell the woman, okay, 90% chance, you're, I never say 100%, but 90% chance uh, this is not a cancer because it went away. And so you, you can get a handle on it. And even if it's a small cancer, very often, if you just do a little lymphatic uh, drainage and, and promote health, you could very often um, make, the, uh, make, make the cells normal again, behave normal again, uh, simply because you're providing a normal, healthy environment again. So I'm going to uh, uh, show you a few things. The first, the, before I show you anything about that, you need to understand that it is important to have good structural integrity, that you have symmetry, that you don't have one rib uh, out in a different place than another, because all the lymphatic drainage is going to do is just, you know, you're trying to push water across a dam, you know, and it's going to just accumulate right back again. So, um, I'm going to show you how to check the ribs, the rib cage later. Right now, I'll just give you something that I think is more interesting for everybody, and that is how to uh, um, how to get rid of a lump in the breast. And by the way, for those of you who were with me, uh, I know Ver Veronica, and I don't know who else. Wanda, were you there with me? With the, in the uh, oh, you're on the phone. Okay, Mark. Uh, anybody Mark was with you. Anybody that was with me. Uh, in the class, in Dr. Garcia's class, the young lady sitting next to me had a lump in her breast and I showed her how to get rid of it. And we, you remember that? Yeah. And we got rid of most of it. It, it went from, from a size like that to, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Very tiny. yeah. And I, just, I didn't have time because the class was ending. I just said, do this at home, it should go away. And if it doesn't go away, you need to do something about it. Call me or whatever. So that I never heard from her. Anyway, the, um, um, but it's that easy, really. And this is this I did, by the way, in the middle of the class. Okay, now she didn't have to get undressed. All I did was just show her what to do, and she did it. So I'm gonna show you these things now. The first thing I'm gonna show you is basic hygiene. Whenever, now remember, I'm assuming the ribs are all moving well. You've gotten yourself tested. The ribs are all moving well. The, you know, you, you put your, hand on top of the rib, you're all going together. I'll show you that in a few minutes how to do it for those who are interested. Um, number one, here's, a, I'm gonna do a breast massage on myself right now. Here, I'm in the shower. I'm standing with my hands at my hips. Here's my nipple right here. You think of the nipple as a um, center of a hub, like a, like a bicycle wheel, and the spokes of the wheel are going in all directions from that center. And, um, you think of the breast tissue like a fine pore sponge so that is soaked with honey. It's filled with honey. So if you have the, uh, if you have a, uh, a bar of honey and you want to squeeze the honey out of it, you know, this is a fine pore sponge that was squeezed and then held in a honey into it, filled with honey. If you go like that, you're just going to hit the surface. What you have to do is you have to go deep, hard, and slow. You have to go deep, hard, and slow. Now, you, could, you have a choice. You could do it really hard, in which case you will damage the lymphatic tubules, or you could substitute hardness for slowness, with slowness. So if you just take a long time, it, it'll, you just squeeze all that honey out of the fine cell sponge. Okay, you just squeeze all the honey out. If you go like that, it didn't do anything. You didn't get a chance, it, the, the lymphatics didn't have a chance to move. Now, the, um, um, so the way we do it is like this. We wanna go in all directions, away from the nipple, away from the nipple. So we go like that, like that. Now the consciousness, what's the consciousness that we have in our mind? Watch like this. If I wanna go underneath, I can do this because I'm very flat, right? But if I had a, a large breast, I would actually go up like that, pick it up like that, and then go down, go down. That's it. You see, now notice I'm doing one sweep in every direction. I, I don't go 
three times here, and you know, or even if I do it slowly, I don't do it three times here. I can do once or twice, and that's it. Why? Because you don't want to damage those delicate lymphatic vessels and have them swell up and then block the lymphatics. It'll be counterproductive if you do too much. You gotta do a little bit. Lymphatics like soft pressure, slowness, gentle touch. When you do this, if you think about the sponge with the honey, your mind will already guide you as to how to drain the honey out of the sponge. And then you do this side, now you do this side. And again, under the, under the, you know, under the armpit, right? You go up like that, like that, pick up, go down like that, down like that, go wherever you want, okay? You went all around, then you do it one more time. You go here again, and then you go here again. That's all it took. It's very quick, it takes a minute. Women, this is how you shower. This is how you apply soap in a shower because you're slippery, and it's very easy to do the lymphatic massage. That is the new way of washing your chest. In other words, don't just go like that everywhere, you know? Do it methodically and, and get those breasts to be healthy. Now, it is also important something else. Two mindsets. One is thinking about the honey with the pore, you know, with a small pore sponge and, you know, go slowly and methodically and get all around radially. The other thing to keep in mind is the knowledge to remember when you're doing this don't just do it and oh you're thinking about the tiles on the wall or the shopping or whatever no this is your moment to connect with your body and generate health for your body and know that by pushing away the old stale lymphatics you have just made room for the new lymphatics and that you are introducing health therefore introducing health into your breast so when you do it know that you're introducing health. Do it with that consciousness. If, you, if what you're doing is, well, I just got to rub my skin a little bit, that consciousness goes right to your hand and you didn't do anything. You just wasted your time. Don't even bother doing it. So have the consciousness that you are introducing healing and health. You sponge with the honey. You're nurturing your health, yourself back to health. When that happens, your body will respond in kind and give you the good health you're looking for. And, and is, it, is it a preventative too? I mean, should we this all... Is this is preventative. This is so you don't get the breast cancer to begin with. Gotcha. The, most of the women that come to me and they have all kinds of lumpy, bumpy breasts. They have fibrocystic breasts. They have a lump here, a lump there. They do this. I make sure their ribs are okay. I make sure that everything is draining well. And not all women have bad ribs. Not all men have bad ribs. Sometimes the rib is out and that's why you got to fix it. But um, uh, when they do this, invariably they will tell me that within two weeks all their lumps are gone that the breast tissue is very soft and uniform uh, that is a very very beautiful blessing and a gift to receive that you gave yourself and so they tell me that it takes about two weeks and then they don't find any more lumps in their breasts if there's a persistent lump that doesn't want to go away you call somebody you call a uh, um, you call your doctor uh, or do something, but find out what's going on. Or Quick question, Doc. Are, is there bras that are better for women? I mean, bras are expensive. Are there ones that are better to support their, their system? I always, pref I always prefer uh, to see bras without the wires, but if they're going to have to, some women say, no, I'd rather die. Okay, then you know what? <laughs> bend, bend, the, uh, bend the wire out a little bit so it doesn't poke into your skin. Right. And that's the compromise. That is the compromise. But I think just Doctor, hi, hi. Quick question. Just, I just want to confirm. I have a patient who has um, breast implants. Can she still also use that preventative method? Is or is it even more important? I don't. Th I I would stay away from all of that. And the reason is this. But she already uh, has them, and she has like. Uh, she get it. Here, here's the thing. Most of the time, the implants. Are, there's no breast tissue to have the lymphatics. It's skin and you know subcutaneous and stuff, and uh, <clears throat> you're not really going to do anything. There's no breast tissue there theoretically. So uh, now, if she has, if someone just wants augmentation, if that's all they're doing is augmentation, then 
uh, still, when you're doing the lymphatics, there's two problems that are going to happen. Um, These are ladies that, this is over 120,000 people that have signed up on Facebook, women that have had breast plant illnesses and they share their stories. It's yeah, I know, it's terrible. Yeah, it's, well, you know what? it's beyond it's epidemic. Better. What's yeah, that? It's autoimmune and it's just, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's very bad for the industry. Yeah, I just want that for the industry. That's why, that's why they, uh, uh, that, you know, the industry does not want, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little, a little bit of a horror story on it. Let me finish the uh, breast implant. Number one, you're not reaching the tissues you want when you do this. Number okay. two, number two, you're agitating a foreign body that's releasing a chemical and that's not a good thing either. Okay. Got it. Also, Thanks. Okay. Now, uh, by the way, um, uh, there was a, um, uh, one interesting statistic, 90% of all the uh, cancers found on examination are found by the women on self breast exam. And you're going to do that whenever you do when, when you touch yourself in a shower, soapy, slippery, it's a good time to get familiar with the terrain and see where the lumps are. 90% of the cancers found on exam are found by the women doing self breast exam. So this is, they, they softened it a little bit. Look at this. No requirements for clinicians to teach women how to perform as a breast exam, self breast exam. And the, um, they changed it a little bit. They used to be more aggressive about telling doctors, do not teach, they actually had it in red, in red letters, do not teach uh, women how to, uh, uh, how to, uh, um, uh, how to do a self breast exam instead and when of I, and when yeah. I went to medical school, maybe like you, I mean, that was routine to teach people how to do that. Yes. But then come, comes the politics and the finances. And suddenly the recommendations were, and I used to show this to my, my patients all the time. This is the first time I've seen it without the red letters that say, do not teach women how to do self breast exam. Okay. Number one, I showed you how to do lymphatic breast massage, right? Number two, uh, I'm going to show you how to get rid of a lump. And, and by the way, before, you do the, before I show you that, there's one other technique that will very often get rid of the lumps um, in the breast um, within about two weeks in most cases. And that is, I take Lugol's iodine and I dilute it with some water, like 50-50. And uh, um, uh, you take Lugol's and you make it, it's 2%, so you make it 1% just 50, 50 water. And you can put a few drops on the breast and just rub it around. Or I use a spray sometimes and just rub it around and um, uh, do it both sides. And there's a, um, there's a strain of mice that, they, that, they, uh, that gets breast cancer very easily. They found if they give them enough iodine, they cannot give these mice breast cancer. Um, one of the things that iodine will do, iodine, there are two, places in the body that love iodine. One is the thyroid and the other is the breast. And they're both right near each other. The thyroid edges out breast by a little, but they love iodine. They thrive on iodine. The iodine will help the uh, uh, estrone become a friendlier estrone. And, uh, the, um, and, and iodine makes the lymphatics very, very fluid, makes them very watery. So they drain very easily. So when you're just walking and moving, you're pumping those lymphatics much more effectively. So the, um, uh, if I have women that put the iodine on themselves and after, usually after a few weeks, two, three weeks, whatever, uh, most of them will tell me they no longer have any lumps or bumps in their breasts. So if you do both the, the shower massage and at some point put the iodine and you do it every day, by the end of two weeks, you should pretty much, I would guess the vast majority will have no lumps, bumps, or anything else. The fibrocystic breasts disappear. All the bad stuff disappears. So, um, that's, so that's iodine is number two. Shower massage number one, iodine number two. Number three, what if you have a lump in a breast? Woman, let's say you do an exam. And you, know, you should really, by the way, in doing an exam, I always tell, and you can do this to yourselves. Um, I always tell, uh, especially when I teach doctors how to do it, but I tell the women too, don't do it the way they teach you in school or in the books. They tell you to go by the quadrant, you go here, here, you know, you go, so you make sure you didn't, you got anything. You can't feel anything when you do that. 
It's like studying the Mona Lisa one quadrant at a time. You can't do that. Um, the, um, what I tell them is first, the one thing they don't teach us in medical school is how to feel, how to palpate. Think in terms of uh, thinking when you feel, don't feel like a doctor or like an exam. Anyway, okay. Where we, oh yeah, so when you feel, when you feel, when you're looking for information, start by feeling like a child, not like a doctor. What does a child do? There are no rules. You explore, you explore, right? Go to where your consciousness takes you. And one of the things to keep in mind is there are several things you can do, but try not to be rigid about it. One is, you can just, you know, move around. If you, if you make the breast slippery or wet in the shower, it is much easier to feel than a dry skin. You feel you have much, much better uh, perception. Number two, um, um, watch, you could roll the breast tissue. You could roll the breast tissue under your hand. And if there's a lump, very often it'll sort of feel like it's rubbing under your hand. Um, Another, this is a very important thing to do now. This is really important and I don't know why doctors don't do it, but it's the most useful tool I have. And that is um, if, the, if the lump is over here and I go like that, I can, I can usually feel it, grab it from the side, wherever the side. Now most women will have some thickening right around the sides over here. So this is a good place to practice and learn because when you grab it, you could feel around, you know, but. You learn, you, you learn how to navigate. And then uh, when you feel, you'll feel, oh, there's the edge right there. Okay, so you, know, you feel it like that. And, um, and you can feel it moving it even, you know, the lump, wherever that is. And um, you just get familiar with it and let your mind form the image of how big it is and so on. One of the things you could do is you could take a ruler and measure against it and see how many centimeters or inches it is. Um, so that you know what it is, because when you're going to do the treatments you're going to do, you should start seeing it disappear. So, uh, uh, hey Doc, one quick question on that. So, when you're applying your hands, you find a tumorous growth and there's a lump there, separate from the you know personal shower, um, clean, uh, you know treatment. Will you be working that same way away from it? You do the same thing I showed you before. Okay. I'm going to show you one more technique specific to get rid of lumps. Another thing to do is if the breast is over here to feel underneath very softly, very gently. And very often you'll find a little bump sticking against it. You should explore what that is because that may not be a good thing. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but the, you know, under, underneath the breast, people forget to feel underneath. The other thing is I always, um, when I do the exam, I'm always exam. And another way to examine is to grab between the fingers and the thumbs, and you know, like that. You know what I mean? In other words, I, I grab uh, for three dimensional because your mind creates a three dimensional image when you touch on two sides. Okay, we weren't designed to see things in two dimensions. It's three dimension, and I go like that, and I rub with the thumb like that, and you know, like that. And and if you're hitting against something, you go boom. Hey, what's that? You know. So. It's very important, and then underneath to feel. Um, so the thumb, rolling the thumb over the area is very important. Going, you know, like finding it like that, you know, and grabbing it wherever it happens to be. Um, most benign ones are along the sides anyway. That's where they usually start. If it's somewhere else, uh, chances are it's not such a happy thing and you need to get rid of it. Very often you could get to it and get rid of it before it becomes a cancer. What you're gonna do, watch. I wanna, I wanna emphasize. The lymphatics are going to be draining through the ribs. Remember, they go through the ribs, right? And they drain into the central circulation. What you're going to do, first I'm going to give you um, a little, if you had a wish, what can we do? Well, we want to have the lymphatics go from the outside into the inside of the uh, rib cage, away from the lump, away from wherever we want. So this is how we do it. Here's the lump right here, guys, okay? Here's the lump right here. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna cup the entire lump and let's say I'm the doctor and eventually you're, you do it to yourself, but like this and, um, and I put just compression all around it, not just on a spot, I'm not smushing the uh, lump. 
I'm covering entirely all around it and I'm going, so I, I, it's surrounded by positive pressure. Positive pressure means pressure all around it, trying to squeeze into it. At the same time that it's surrounded by positive pressure, I create a negative pressure inside the chest. And this is the way I do it. I tell the woman to make believe she's sucking through a cocktail straw. So it's like this, very, very tiny little hole. So that there's, it, it, there's a negative pressure, there's a vacuum inside the chest. Why do you want the vacuum inside the chest? This is a technique I developed. So, you know, it's, uh, you're not gonna see it anywhere. Um, why do you want to have a negative pressure inside the chest? Because remember, you want the fluid going from the area of positive pressure into the area of negative pressure, right? So um, very similar to like, you know, if I was to take a syringe and suck out fluid from a little bottle, if I were to inject air into the bottle, there's positive pressure in there trying to push the fluid out. At the same time, I stick the needle and I pull in a syringe handle so there's negative pressure in a syringe. It's being pushed from here and pulled from there. That fluid is going to go out very efficiently, very quickly. So that's exactly what we're doing. So I'm pushing on here, positive pressure, and and then I wait one breath. And then after, the next, after I wait a breath or so, I do it again. Remember, positive pressure, lots of it, but you don't want to injure anything. You just like, you know, it's almost like you're in a hyperbaric chamber. Just, and at the same time, you're sucking air through a tiny hole, creating a vacuum. Now, why do I tell people to suck through a tiny hole? Because we have reflexes, and if you try to just create that vacuum without sucking in any air, you're not going to be as effective or as efficient. So I tell people to suck in a little air, but make it very difficult to suck the air in so you get a lot, of, uh, a lot of negative pressure inside the chest and you get positive pressure outside. And after you've done that, and you've done about five compressions, go back, check, measure, find out did it go. Very often you will find that within five compressions, it lost about one third of its diameter. So then you do it again, five compressions, go back, measure, you find out it lost the other third. One third of the diameter? I'm sorry? One third of the diameter? One third of the diameter will disappear. In other words, let's, let's say this is the size of the lump, right? Right. You measure across with a ruler. You did this five times. The next, the next time you measure, it'll look like that. Gotcha. The next time you measure another five, it'll look like that. And the next time you measure, it'll be gone. So usually it can take five to 10, 15, uh, pumps with breathing in negative pressure usually it takes about five, um, about you know five ten fifteen twenty whatever it takes every woman is different but if you do it for twenty times and it's not changing we've got a problem it's already this is beyond now even tumors will have a little bit of edema around the capsule and when you do this you will lose the edema so you shrink a little bit you say ah it's working but then it doesn't want to go beyond that that's not working. You should be able to make, if you do your job right, you should be able to make that lump completely disappear within 15 to 20 breaths. Dr. Bruce, can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you. Ah, yes, okay. I'm doing my phone and my computer. When you did that cocktail straw um, um, thing with, with that woman, I, was there something where you said to pretend you're breathing down into your hips with it, or was no. it to the, the lump itself or just straight in? Just, just create negative pressure in the chest. Nothing fancy. Okay. okay. Thank you. And uh, I mean, if you want to visualize anything, you visualize the fluid uh, exiting from the lump and going draining into the chest. Okay. That's what it was. Yeah. But that's, if you want to visualize anything, you could do that. But, Thank you. You, but if you do that, I'm telling you, I, I've, I've been called a witch. I've been called a magician, all kinds of stuff because they, it disappears. I had one lady, she flew in from, I don't know, somewhere in the Northeast, you know, and she came to me and I said, you journeyed a long time. She said, well, I heard it was worth it. So I said, I hope it'll be worth it. I said, what's going on? She said, I have a lump over here and everybody's scaring the heck out of me. And uh, so the first thing I did was a thermogram and there was no heat on the lump. I said, well, if there's no heat on the lump, 
there's a 99% likelihood that it's not cancer. That's why, that's why it's, by the way, do you, know, do you know how accurate a mammogram is in telling you that something is not cancer? Zero percent. It cannot do it. It can only tell you what it sees. It cannot tell you what it doesn't see. A thermogram can tell you that something isn't cancer. Be, uh, likelihood, statistically. Anyway, so the thermogram was clean. So I said, well, for now, you have a 99% chance that it's not cancer. I said, now let's see if we could make it go away. And she said, how? I said, I'll show you. She said, you're going to make this lump disappear? I said, yeah. She said, how long will it take? I said, about five minutes. She thought, <laughs> I thought she was going to walk out of my office. She thought, okay, this guy has flipped his lid, you know? But she was curious. She said, okay, show me. So I did. And I gave her this technique. And I, I think it was 10 or 15 breaths. And it was completely gone. We couldn't find anything anymore. And she started laughing. And she didn't know if she should laugh or cry. I mean, she didn't know what she was doing. And she was just so happy. And she walked out. She said, it was worth every mile of that trip. She said, I'm so happy. And, and she, was, she was fine. And I said, look, keep an eye on it. See where it goes. You know, do your tests. We did the tumor markers and all that just for, you know, for, uh, you know, good measure. But there was nothing there. And uh, I said, if you ever get anything back, just call me and let me know. And that was it. Is, That's the kind of doctor, stuff. What gets released when you do that? You say it, it's, it's being released. Is it a toxic release? Is it a, a water? No, no, no. The fluid goes out of the lump and that's all. That's all, okay. And the lump disappears and that's all. Okay. This, is, this, is not, this is not rocket science. This is really simple. So, okay, next. Uh, I want to just say a couple of things now. I want to show you a couple of things. Hang on a second. This is, let's talk about thermography. It's a temperature. It's, a, it's an image taken by temperature. The middle image over here is a photograph. This is a thermogram, the heat pattern of her back in color. And this is the heat pattern of her back in grayscale. What you see over here, she has a wide area of red because she had a, a shoulder injury. In the gray, what you're seeing over here, and everybody can see this, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, what you see over here is leopard spots. You see all the leopard spots? You see the side, leopard spots? And um, the leopard spots are uh, what you see when you have a lot of estrogen. This is a woman who's estrogen dominant. So even if the lab test doesn't show estrogen dominance, the, um, uh, the thermogram is showing you that the, the effect of estrogen outweighs the effect of the progesterone. Is that where the estro extra estrogen is being stored? Is that what you're seeing? No, no, no. Estrogen okay. has a vasodilating effect on our body, but it's a, uh, but it has this kind of pattern. It's not uniform. Gotcha. So it just, it, it's just the way it works. Uh, we can talk about it another day. Now, this is when she's estrogen dominant. I want you to pay attention. You see this right here? Estrogen dominant. Over here, one week later, after we fixed some of the estrogen dominance. Can you see how there's less leopard spots? Oh, yeah. Take a look at her chest. This is the front of the chest. And you see over here, all this heat going, look at this, look at this. These are places that are, uh, are waiting to become cancer maybe. Take a look at, the, um, at this uh, uh, color graph over here, almost no, no heat, everything is beautiful. There's a little red here and here and that's symmetrical and that's normal for her. And, but the breast is no longer has all this uh, threatening appearances. Now here's something that I bet you didn't know because I discovered it. <laughs> I discovered it about 20 years ago. Um, take a look at the uh, tongue. This one, she's estrogen dominant. You see, you see over here and over here, same thing, right? What you're seeing here is what you're seeing here. What you're seeing here is what you're seeing here. Take a look. You see the red spots? You see all these little red spots? Yeah. That's when she's estrogenic. If a woman is ovulating, something like that, her tongue is going to be much more... Um, uh, little red dots everywhere. Sometimes it'll be all over the place, you know, like uh, over here, you know. Um, anyway, um, this is the same tongue without the estrogen dominance. And you can see it's less polka dots, less red dots, you see? So the red dots on the tongue will tell you that you're estrogenic. I've seen this on men too. If they're estrogenic, they'll have more red dots. Uh, different parts of the cycle. Women, I invite you to... Uh, those of you who are still having cycles, um, to uh, look at your tongue in the mirror and at different parts of the month, take a look and see what your estrogen level is. 
and eventually you'll get so familiar with it, you'll be able to look at your tongue and see what your estrogen levels are. That'll be very important if you ever start missing periods or having other issues. You'll look at your tongue and say, oh, my estrogen's high, oh, my estrogen's low. At least it'll give you more clinical data. Next. That's also the ancient uh, practice of, of scanning and reading is solely by the tongue, right? Yeah, there, there are many ways you can do that. I, I spoke to a Chinese doctor that was doing a lot of that, but he didn't have this one. And he had different ones that I learned from. Um, here is, here is a, um, you see this over here? This is, this is ominous. This is not a healthy looking blood vessel and the, the breast is suffering. And this, very often this pattern will become a cancer. Um, and uh, the black and white is very good, thermogram is very good for looking at vascular patterns. Take a look at what happened after I gave her the rib cage adjustment. Here we go. Can you see the difference? Here, big threatening vessel, everything cooled down. Even over here, you see all the polka dots, estrogen, congestion, take a look. Now, if you take a look at it, it's the same day, June 5, uh, 2009, 15.03, three o'clock in the afternoon, 3.02 uh, in the afternoon. Take a look at this, 5.51 in the afternoon. You see that? So it's three hours later. Now take a look at the difference. Is this also preventing um, it to recur? So once you've cleared it out, does it become preventative for? If our rib will stay in place, it'll prevent the recurrence. Here's front view, take a look at this, take a look at that. You see the difference? Wow. And then um, if we go to the color, here's what it looked like before, and it had some heat over here. The red is hot and the blue is cold, and uh, yellow is in between, you see? It's like according to the scale. And over here, she is just fine. Now, take a look at what's interesting is even her armpit. You see the armpit over here is a little heat. Always get a little heat trapped in the armpit. But take a look at this armpit. This whole area is hot, you see? Whereas after the adjustment of the ribs, take a look, they're both equal. See that? So the question becomes, um, does, does the woman want to uh, uh, look like this or like this? Like this or like this? Can you see? And symmetry is paramount. So now the breasts are almost entirely symmetrical, whereas before you have one cool breast, blue, and one green, yellow, and a little red uh, you know, uh, inside it. Um, so uh, that's, that's it. That's all I wanted to show you on that. Yeah, and this is just a nipple difference. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let me go back to- Can, can we go and how, how do we get one of those tests done? Uh, you got to go to somebody with a thermogram or you buy one and you learn how to use it. So uh, we have a thermogram in my office. Um, here's another one that's rib cage. I fixed the ribs on her. She came in, she flew in from Missouri to see me, this woman. Um, but she was having problems and she was having lumpy breasts and she had uh, the, um, you know, this is lymph lymphatic congestion, vascular congestion. The red is hot, you see that? This is heat because the blood vessel is so congested. And take a look at all the areas of heat because of congestion. And this is 25 minutes after the rib cage adjustment. Take a look, much better. And you take a look over here. This is so red, it's white. Over here, it's back to red, it's almost the same. But this is 25 minutes for gosh sakes, you know? Here is um, before, again over here, the same, the same thing. Look at all the vascular congestion and look over here almost gone. And uh, she ended up with, uh, uh, she ended up with much smoother breasts. I spoke to her a couple of weeks later. She said, there are no more lumps in my breasts. There's no more nothing. She was doing what I told her to do, what I told you to do, the lymphatic uh, shower massage, a little bit of iodine. And she told me two weeks later, she says, I have perfect uniform breast tissue. So that's uh, just something for, for you to learn about, you know? Um, I have a question for you. Does this also help the respiratory system that, in, that you're also freeing up all that space to breathe easier? Completely. Uh, let me explain. Um, the, um, hang on. Let me t show you one last thing I wanted to show you and then we'll, I'll one show more you. One more question because I've had extensive chiropractors and it, they always seem to get you back, but then you go back to where you were. You know what I mean? 
Okay, I'll explain to you why in a minute, okay? okay? That's a very good question, don't forget it. Let me explain to you why in a minute. So, this is the risk scale. One or two is associated with a uh, level one or a level is with a 99%. You see there are no vessels? The risk rating is a level one risk. 99% chance there is no likelihood or certainty there is no breast cancer present. So both sides are level one risk or nothing. And you can see the color is beautiful. It's uniform, everything is great. If you have a little bit of vascularity right here, then uh, just a little bit, it's a level two. Again, associated with a 99% likelihood of no cancer. Here is um, level three. She has a loop already and she has branching. When you have branching, it's level three. And that's a, according to some studies, they said 40% likelihood of uh, cancer within five years, but I don't find that to be the case. I think that's exaggerated. Here is another lady. She's a level three risk, you see? And uh, what's interesting about this lady is that I gave her the techniques that I showed you. I may have given her some estrogen uh, softeners like uh, uh, broccoli or something, but take a look at this. You see who she is here, level three? You see, asterisk, take a look. Level two, same lady. This is the same lady. After she got the, uh, after she took care of her breasts and made them healthy. Over here, she has a risk of cancer, a normal risk of cancer, which is now one to six or one out of seven. Um, over here, her chances of cancer are near zero, right here. That's why this is so important. Here is a little higher three. And here's four, you can see a big hot area. Uh, this is a high four. Uh, a very strong chance of cancer, but not quite highest risk. Highest risk is level five, and I want you to see, this is a woman with cancer over here, and you can see the vascular patterns. This is cancer. And then over here, and this is a woman on Premarin, and you see how estrogenic she is? It's the cancer. But uh, when, you see the, when you see a pattern like this, which is, which is, uh, you know, leopard spots gone crazy. That is a, uh, a super estrogenic woman. And this is a woman on Premarin, which is why I never give Premarin to, uh, to anybody. Uh, by the way, the, the word Premarin is short for pregnant mares. That's where they get it from, pregnant mares. Seriously. Um, Henry, uh, let me go back to... Hey, Doc, one quick question. Like Dr. Garcia talks about scars being a place of our clearing because so much toxicity right. resides there. I mean, is, is that another way of scanning we can do around scar tissues and scar areas? I use scars all the time to teach scanning. The, um, when, I, when I teach energetic scanning, when, when, suppose I have a scar right over here, right? It's the easiest thing in the world to start feeling it energetically. And then you compare it to what you feel physically and you feel it energetically and you learn all kinds of things. This is part of the class that I give now. Um, and it's very easy to start learning how to do it. You, you learn it much faster than you ever thought. You would. I have a question for you. It's about the iodine mixture. Is that something that can be incorporated like on a weekly basis after the two weeks? Can women use that to I keep have, and help, help to maintain healthy? It, yeah, I have women using it daily for years. Uh, okay. But, but um, uh, you know, very often they'll go back down to maybe once or twice a week. But while you're trying to clear out the breasts of the lumps, you just do it more often. If you are if you're at high risk, let's say a bad thermogram or exam or something you don't like, um, then you use it more often. Use it daily until you clear out the problem, or at least you're blowing wind into the sails of the healing machinery in your body. 